Hey, good afternoon you guys, nk 40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven, and today we are reviewing the cheapest or most entry-level over-the-ear headphones from Skull Candy. These are the Hesh 3 editions. I owned a pair of Hesh 2s. Uh, I loved them, actually. They were really good for the price. I think I got them on a super sale or something. Lasted for a long time, ended up giving them to a friend that had no headphones. Uh, the Hesh 3 packs a whole bunch of features that the last model did not have. They look a lot sleeker, they're lighter, better battery life, more cushioning on the head pad. A uh, bunch of other stuff, and we are going to get into the nitty gritty right about now. Alrighty, boys, over here at the Stormtrooper desktop, as always, going to go ahead and slide myself on in here so we can get right down to the nitty gritty unboxing of the Skull Candy Heshes here, the entry model of the over the ear line for the Skull Candy Company. Now, packaging, very nice. Very nice, actually. I love their branding. Uh, I think it's really cool. Nice marketing technique, obviously. Some of the interesting features of the Hesh 2 here, you have 22 hours of playtime uh, when fully charged, and this has rapid charge, which is pretty dope. 10 minutes of charge time gets you four hours of listening time. That's pretty good. Uh, superior sound, so you've got finely tuned 40 millimeter drivers, so it's a good size, 40 millimeters. Size does matter in many things in life. Uh, for rich sound for every genre. Uh, all day comfort, that's because it has memory foam ear cushions. Again, the ear cushions are pretty fucking good on these. Uh, noise isolating fit, so like I said earlier, even though it's not powered um, active noise canceling because it just fits over your ear and is really cushy and squishy, it's gonna block out a lot of sound. You have your built-in controls, so for volume, pausing, changing tracks, uh, like I mentioned, collapsible design, folding for easy transportation. All right, let's break into this bad boy, shall we? Oh my, here I am trying to get rough with her and she just opens right up. I love that. Easy access is what I am about. Just peels a, oh. Yeah, their packaging is nice. Um, they're right there on the level of like Razor, Scuff, stuff like that, Corsair. You know, all these companies that have the dough, Mm, man. All right, so it shows you uh, what buttons do what right here. You have little cups here, so you know they've been hugged nicely from their trip from China or wherever they come from. You have your little accessory box right here with the little Skull Candy logo on it. That has your cord in there. Two cords, actually. Also has uh, a little pamphlet here that is probably your, yep, quick start guide. I don't know how to read, so I'm going to throw that aside. All right, you have your... Micro USB cable here, this is for charging. Then you have your uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in a nice crimson red. It's not a bright red, it's a uh, darker red to match the controller. How well, or controller, the headset, how well does it match? Pretty damn good. Obviously because this is rubber and that's plastic, it's kind of hard to color match, but it looks pretty good. So all in all, um, quality of this is pretty good. It's got the Skull Candy logo on there, so they make these in house. A uh, little brass tip there, three gaskets on there, you know, standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Um, these are Bluetooth though, so I'll probably primarily be using them like that. However, uh, when I do go to test them for video gaming, I'll be plugging them into a controller on the Xbox and PS4. So how I want to handle headset or headphone reviews on this channel is I want to see how they handle three different situations. Working out, so gym situations where you're moving around a lot, you'll see what tests we have in store for that. Um, because I'm a rather active guy. I do exercise, you know, about five days a week and whatnot. Um, so they need to be good at that. Also for gaming, whether it's a gaming headset or not, these are not primarily for gaming. However, I'm sure they can perform for a video game headset. They have a built-in mic for talking to Siri and whatnot. We'll see how it works for just standard gaming, you know, how, that, how it sounds. Uh, and then third would be... Um, music production. So how accurate are the drivers, the monitors in there? How accurate is the dynamic range? Can it pick up the lows when you're laying down a nice synth track or whatever? I used to produce music back in high school and actually even into middle school. Uh, I used to get on like Fruity Loops, Reasons, um, per what was the other one that I used to use a lot? Well, Apple Garage Band, that's not the one I was thinking of. But yeah, I used to produce uh, instrumentals, beats and stuff like that. Kind of got away from that and got more into uh, what I do now. But anyway, Story for another day, boys. Pull these bad boys out of here. All right, so they're extremely light. They do feel a little bit cheap. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, but they are their cheapest headphone. 
Ooh, you don't want to bend them too much like that. I can already feel a lot of pressure in there. They're not one of the flexible head headsets you can really do that with. Uh, they do feel a little cheap and chintzy, I'm not going to lie. Um, I do like the cosmetic design of them. I'm not big into red, but I think this kind of two-tone red that they did is really nice. Uh, I have some really nice soft padding up here and some perforated uh, pleather, plastic leather up there with a little interesting notch or indent. I guess if you have like a little knot on the top of your head, like somebody whacked you, you're, you're okay. Um, these do fold in, so if you have them around your, your neck like that, they're not necessarily, you know, choking you out, which is cool. Uh, the padding on the ears, really good. This is the same exact ear cups that they have on the uh, Skull Candy Crushers that I've had for over a year. My dailies, absolutely love them. Um, so they have like a moisture wicking um, vented mesh in there that keeps your ears warm, or warm, cool, when you're exercising and whatnot, which is cool. And then also very soft padding on the sides there. So let's crack them on the old noggin and see how they feel. And then your uh, controls and stuff on the side, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, charging micro USB port, up and down, which will be uh, not only your volume, but also double tap up for your next track, double tap minus for the previous track, and then this will be pause. You have a built-in microphone right here so you can activate your assistant like Siri or Cortana or whatever. Uh, in order to do that, you'll double tap here on the power button. In order to power these on and off, you will hold down this button for about three seconds. You'll get a little uh, light flashing. Since this is the first time I've turned these on, it's flashing red and blue like I'm getting pulled over, throw them in the air. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my phone to pair these bad boys. All right, cool. So we are now connected. See how they feel, see how they sound. So I have a rather small head, so I really don't need to do a whole lot of adjustment, but these obviously do adjust here. You have a nice brushed aluminum finish in here, and that actually is uh, aluminum. It's got plastic underneath it, but as you can see, it's got a layer on the outside of aluminum for a little bit more strength and rigidity. But again, I, I have a pretty tiny head. Big brain, tiny head. All right, let's put on some jams, boys, see what the sound's like on these bad boys. So whenever you adjust your volume from the headset or from the phone, it's reflected on the uh, volume bar on the, on the um, screen there, which is nice so you know exactly where your volume's at. We're just gonna max them out though, cause fuck it. Yeah, you gotta have the robot ears to like that dubstep there. That electronic. All right, so initial impressions, that was maxed out, of course. Um, volume wasn't overpowering or anything like that. I didn't feel like I was getting blown out of my socks. It wasn't really taking me for a ride anywhere or anything like that, but uh, it sounded good. Bass was um, not overwhelming or anything like that, but it was good, um, especially for headphones in this price point over the ear headphones in this price point you're not going to be getting into like any bose or uh sony might have a couple they do actually logitech sony uh audio technica they have entry level headphones in this price point but the majority of their headphones are you know two three four hundred dollars um so yeah honestly they sound really good um and it seems like i've blocked out a lot of noise i have the fan for my pc back here um my house is pretty quiet right now, but um, seem to block out a lot of noise. Uh, I'll definitely be, you know, taking these for a walk around the neighborhood and stuff, seeing how it blocks out like traffic noise and shit like that. You know, cars that could creep right up on me and hit me. I wouldn't even know because I'm wearing these. Um, they don't have active noise canceling or anything like that, but with any over the ear headphone, because they cup over your ear, it's going to block out a good amount of sound. Um, yeah, they can fold up, obviously. Uh, yeah, they sounded good. Trouble was good. Mids were pretty solid. Um, I'm going to listen to some more tracks and we're going to see how these handle the three situations I was talking about. Exercise, gaming, and music production.
get headphones working with the PlayStation 4 or Xbox, simply plug them into the bottom of the controller. For the PS4, you go into the options here by holding down the PS button and you want to change your audio to all audio so you're getting the game sound as well as your chat audio. And then you control your volume from volume control test, headphones test. and you can also adjust your mic input. Test, test. I generally keep mine right underneath the good. Uh, I feel like in the middle is a little bit too quiet test. and anything above where the good is located is just a little bit too much. So dropping into Fortnite here. All right guys, this is the audio quality with the built-in microphone on the Hesh 3s here. You cannot use the onboard volume controls and you cannot even power these on when you are through a wired connection via PC or a gaming console controller. It'll automatically get powered off of uh, the external device, which sucks because it basically makes the audio sound completely different. It's very hollow, very tinny. There's no dynamic range. Uh, if you do have active noise canceling like the crusher or venue angst uh, and you are powered on or I'm sorry plugged in you will not be able to activate that which really sucks and it basically makes these sound like you know a ten dollar pair of radio shack uh, which is unfortunate because these are you know well the hash threes are about 70 bucks the venue angst are about 130 bucks the crusher originals are between 130 150 and then the crusher angst uh, or latest generation of crushers are 280 to 320 which is a uh, pretty hefty price tag if I do say so myself. But anyway, uh, these sound extremely tinny, extremely hollow, uh, which also really affects your situational awareness and positioning, being able to tell where enemies are, left, right, etc. Um, that really sucks. Also, as I'm sure you guys can, can notice, um, the microphone has a weird whirring or humming sound. I have tried three different controllers. I have also troubleshot and adjusted every setting known to man, and I have not been able to uh, get that to stop. So, um, People in your chat would be very upset. Uh, if you're doing streaming like on Twitch or something like that, that would be pretty unacceptable quality. Ooh, I'm glitching out here a little bit. So yeah, all in all, these just uh, really don't sound good for gaming at all. Like that shotgun blast should have vibrated my skull right there and literally it just sounded like some like $5 AirPod knockoffs. There was no uh, bass whatsoever and the, the mids and treble are also extremely muddy. It's just, uh, it, it doesn't sound good at all. But then again, these headphones are not, it's not a gaming headset. That's not what they're meant for. So something to keep in mind. Alrighty guys, so as for trying to video edit or create any uh, music content whatsoever, got a little vape juice here, sorry about that. Uh, basically, they're not great. Um, the mids and highs are pretty decent when you are able to use them powered, but that is only when you are in wireless configuration. When you go to plug them into the PS4 controller or the PC through a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, uh, which, you know, you could Bluetooth them to uh, your PC if your motherboard does support Bluetooth, which mine does not have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, unfortunately. So, uh, you know, that, I'm shit out of luck there. So for me, being able to, uh, you know, wire up or whatever, it didn't sound very good because it doesn't let you use the actual power drivers. You're just getting powered from whatever uh, device. So in this case, my PC here, it didn't really sound very good. Um, as you see, I'm over here in my video editing software here. This is Adobe Premiere Pro 2019. Fantastic program, by the way, for anyone that is trying to get into video editing. It's phenomenal. I've used many programs. This is by far the best. Um, yeah, it didn't sound great uh, as far as the dynamic range or anything like that. I was trying to mix down, uh, you know, I have background music here while I'm boxing or whatever, and it just really didn't sound. Uh, it was difficult to pinpoint, you know, if it was overpowering the sound of me smacking those uh, gloves on that bag or what. So, you know, not. I ended up switching over to my, my daily headphones in order to finish editing the video, so... Yeah, there's that. But in my final thoughts, though, the Hesh 3s in general are actually a very good value because uh, you can find them for about 50 bucks on Amazon. They have a ton of different colors, which all look pretty dope. And uh, they seem, you know, they feel a little cheap, but they seem durable as well, which is kind of counter counteracting, you know, each other. But they seem like they wouldn't really break in a drop or anything like that just because of the way they're designed. They're very, very comfortable to the ear cups and the uh, headband pad. And, you know... They sound pretty good when you're able to get them hooked up via Bluetooth. They actually sound pretty damn decent. They get pretty loud. Um, they keep the sound in pretty good, so it wasn't too obnoxious, you know, for people around me when I was blasting music. And uh, there's no active sound canceling, but you get the passive uh, audio canceling just from having, you know, over-the-ear headphones that basically block your ear cup. So um, that helps a little bit. So honestly, um, I, I do recommend them in the price point. However, um, there is always sales running on better headphones. For example, um, 
I wouldn't say the venues from Skull Candy because those are literally just a hesh with audio uh, noise canceling. But if you can catch the Crushers or Crusher Anks on sale, um, definitely go for those. Those are like up there with Bose, Sony, Audio Technica, some of the, the, the high hit and heavy hitters, and they sound really good. Then again, they carry a fat price tag. So if you can catch them on sale, like a Black Friday deal or something, you definitely want to get your shovel out and scoop those up. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for my final thoughts. If this is a video that was informative and beneficial for you guys, helped you to kind of get an idea if the Hesh 3s might be a good fit for you, then please like the video. Um, also subscribe for more content like this. I do a lot of tech reviews, you know, peripherals like keyboards, mice, gaming controllers, headsets, etc. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.